I'm Ray. I'm Candace. Welcome to Unpacking Coffee. This week, Tim Wendelbo from Oslo. I'm so, really do you remember the first time we saw Tim in action? It was at uh, the SCAA at the time, right? Right. Yeah. Back in the old days where it was a double A. And he was at a booth and there were just crowds of people around. And I remember thinking like, who is this rock star? He seemed nice. He was making some self-deprecating jokes. Yes. Yeah. Hello, I'm Tim Wendelbo and I'm a Norwegian barista. I was a world barista champion in 2004. Uh, I am owning a coffee shop in Oslo, Norway, where we also roast coffee, we import coffee. I also have a coffee farm in Colombia, which is called Finca El Suelo. And I've also written a couple of books on coffee in the past. Tim Wendelbo was originally known as a world barista champion, but in... 2004! Uh, right. In, in 2007, he started his own roastery named, appropriately, Tim Wendelbo. So he started this roastery after he'd been a barista for nine years. Yeah. yeah. I decided to move on and uh, quit Stocklets and then uh, I opened my own store and the roastery in 2007. So 10 years ago, uh, we've been up and running. Did you know, Candice, that Norway is the second largest drinker of coffee per capita in the world? Second only to Finland. That's right. Uh, most people drink coffee in the office and also at home. Coffee is uh, free also, always in the office and uh, it's kind of uh, the only drink that you ask people uh, if they want, if they come visit you. Uh, you always ask if you want a cup of coffee. In 2012, Candace, he bought a farm. What kind of farm, Ray? I assume coffee. <laughs> now, the reason why I started the uh, getting interested in uh, owning my own farm is because I've been traveling a lot for the last uh, 10 years to visit farmers that I've been working with, the same farmers every year, um, and trying to improve their quality. And um, it was kind of a natural thing when, when, we, when I started roasting my own coffee. Uh, I early understood that uh, it doesn't really matter how much we do trials and errors and test and try to improve our roasting technique if the ingredients aren't good. So if you start off with poor ingredients or old coffee or something, it doesn't really matter what you do with the roaster, the coffee is never gonna taste good. So that's why I started traveling more to Origin uh, to help the farmers improve the quality and, and also develop the qualities that I wanna drink and I wanna buy. Um, and that sort of led to me finally purchasing some land in Colombia. Uh, I bought it from a farmer that I've been working with since 2012. Um, and the reason why I did it was because uh, I'm slowly starting to believe that there has to be a different way of growing coffee in order to improve the quality uh, without using so much pesticides and fungicides and chemicals uh, and because I don't believe that's very sustainable. So uh, after I bought the land I, I ended up taking some soil biology classes with Dr. Elaningham and uh, that's the kind of techniques that I'm going to test out on the farm and, and try to prove to the world that we can grow better and more coffee by using no chemicals or, or mineral uh, fertilizers. So only by only using compost, compost teas and extracts and so on. He also talked to us about um, not only is he trying to produce better tasting organic coffee, but he told us a bit about how to improve your own ability to taste coffee. Well, it's not that difficult actually to learn how to taste anything. Uh, I would basically recommend that you start by buying two or three different uh, coffees that are very different, not three different Kenyan coffees, but maybe one Kenyan coffee, a Brazilian coffee, and maybe an Ethiopian coffee. And then you can brew them on a French press or a V60 or whatever, uh, side by side, and, and taste them side by side. It's much easier to taste or be able to describe flavors when you have something to compare to. Uh, it also helps to go to public cuppings on coffee shops or attend any cupping events and uh, tasting coffees with the coffee professionals that are used to tasting coffees and discussing the coffees afterwards. Tim Wendell Bow, the roastery, is the roaster in residence at La Marzocco right now. 
And there's something else happening that's pretty exciting. So La Marzocco just introduced a home espresso subscription program. And, and Tim is the first coffee that's going out. So <clears throat> I believe you have two dates. How many days are in March? Can, can we say that we're pretty excited about this program? Can we? Yeah, we actually we at Need More Designs uh, built this uh, website and feature for La Marzocco Home. And we made the badge slash identity, mm -hmm. um, took the photos. This is so exciting. This was a really amazing project to be a part of and we're, it's, pr it's really exciting. So the service we will be doing at the La Marzocco Cafe in, uh, in Seattle will be quite similar to what we're doing in Norway. We tend to, we don't do any food or anything in our cafe. So all the focus will be on the coffee itself. So we will have two different espressos, one uh, more sweet and uh, less acidic uh, coffee from Colombia, from Finca Tamana, and then we will have uh, Ethiopian washed Sidamo coffee from Hunkutu Cooperative. That's more floral and, and quite bright and acidic and, uh, and very citric. Uh, we will also do only Aeropress coffees uh, for the black coffee serving. And there will be a coffee menu so you can choose from different coffees. I think we'll have four coffees on the menu that has very different tastes. We'll also have an Aeropress tasting flight. So you can come with a friend uh, and buy a taste flight and you'll be able to taste four coffees made on the Aeropress uh, and have a good explanation from the baristas what to look for when you taste them and so on. Uh, of course, we'll do all the lattes and uh, cappuccino drinks, but we'll do them in the format that we actually do in Norway. So with whole, whole milk only, organic whole milk, and served in small glasses, not in the huge uh, you know, buckets that you can find somewhere in the US. Uh, so eight ounce is our largest size actually, and that's our latte. And you might ask, why do you do the small sizes? Well, we want the milk drinks to actually taste coffee. So uh, the less milk you have, the more coffee you're gonna taste. Tim Wendable Coffee of Oslo, Norway.